All right, so Grandpa, please tell us your full name. J A S. <laughs> what does that stand for? John Andrew Spizak. All right. And were you named after anyone, or is there any a significance to your Grandpa. name? Grandpa. <laughs> no, for John. Were you named after anyone, or what was jo what did John come from? Uh, my dad's brother. Your dad's brother's name was John? John. Yeah. All right. He was a strawberry farmer. He was a strawberry farmer? Yeah. All right, so what was his name, or where, what was his name? Andrew. Andrew. So, so your middle name comes from him. The middle name comes from him. Okay. All right, so your maternal grandparents were strawberry farmers. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Well, I got a yes in, yeah. finally. So just tell us some, some general information about your strawberry farmer grandparents. So, like, how did they meet? Do you know how they met? They met in Hungary. Hung You're he came from Hungary. Okay. Yeah, and he was a captain in the Hungarian army. All right, so do you know how long he was in the Hungarian army for? That, I didn't know that. Uh, probably 10 years. 10 years? All right. Um, let's see. Do you remember what their personalities were like? Or some things that you remember of them? He was a tough old goat. <laughs> <laughs> he was a tough old goat? Yeah, he was. Yeah. All right. Tom. He was a stern. He was a stern man? Yeah. All right, do you remember your, your grandma? What about her? The same thing. What was her name? Teresa. Teresa? Teresa. Oh, man. Okay. Um, all right, so... Yeah, she used to make uh, funk. They call them. Well, it's like uh, Punchki Day. She used to make them all the time. Did Did they have different flavors? But they call her. But she called them funk. But they're Punchkis uh, in a sense. Yeah, she. She'd fill up with uh, berries and cheese and whatever. Strawberry jam, mainly. All the time, everything was strawberries. <laughs> Is that what made you not like strawberries? I don't care too much for strawberries. I'll eat them once in a while now, but... Yeah, from about five, six years old till about... 13, 14, all you had was strawberries. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, all right. So where was the strawberry farm? In Louisiana, in uh, outside the little city of Albany. About how big was it? What? The strawberry farm. Uh, what was that? Uh, 40, 80? I think it was about 60 acres. Okay. It was big. <laughs> Do you have any special memories on the farm or of your grandparents? Like what? Um, special, something special. Yeah, anything that stands out where when you look back, you're like, oh, I remember doing this with them. Oh, I used to, uh, I used to watch him shoot chicken hawks. Yeah, he, he'd come and say, hey, he'd call me John or Janos in Hungarian, Janos. And then uh, he'd tell me that there was a chicken hawk around. And, and so off we went. And then we'd hide under a tree and we'd see him flying. And he, he'd get out with an old single shot shotgun. I got downstairs, and he'd blow them out of the sky. <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah, that's, that's the know. thing that stands out the most? Yeah, that stands out the most, I guess. All right, that's fine. So, so let's go over to your paternal grandparents. I don't think he knows. You don't, or do you know your, your, uh, your dad's grandparents? Did you know them at all? 
Uh, he was a strawberry farmer, too. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, outside Albany there, there's, oh, I don't know how many acres. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven farmers that had, you know, like 20, 30, 40 acres. They were all strawberry farmers. Well, so were they competitors? And then when we, they pick all the strawberries or late fall and take it into town, it would fill up about four or five boxcars. Oh, my. All right, so is that how your parents met? Was from how both of their parents were strawberry farmers? Yeah, they were one, house, one farm in between, the two of them. All right. So they went. Do you know if they went to school together or anything, or how they met? Uh, well, the other parent had a. Well, my father's was the maternal, and he would come down to my dad's, my mother's farm and father and help him out sometimes so <clears throat> and then John his brother would stay at the other house and help him out yeah well that seems like a nice little community then that they had going on down there oh yeah um, yeah that town wasn't too big yeah so let's see <laughs> So if you if you remember grandpa so for your your dad's parents do you know how they met before they were strawberry farmers No Yeah I don't know anything about that Okay Do you remember anything about their personalities or what they were like She was good she was she was a character Yeah Yeah And he he was a big guy like uh like Mark, a big tall one. Oh, my brother Joe took after him, and uh, uh, he he was all right. He didn't he wasn't tough or anything like the other one. The other one was good, but he was just a stern. You know, you got out of line and you knew it. <laughs> Whereas with the other one, you got a line, eh, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. You're just a kid, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so what were your, if you remember, what were your father's parents' names? Do you remember their names? My father's? Your, your father's parents. Or what did you call them? Grandpa and Grandma. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeez, I, I think his name was Joseph. I can't remember what hers was. I don't know if it was Maria or not, but I won't say, you know. All right. That's all right. That's no problem. Yeah. That's no problem. And then, so for your father's parents, do you have any special memories with them? Or anything that stands out about? No, we, we didn't. We didn't see him too much. We'd visit him maybe on a Sunday or something, but uh, we didn't spend too much time with them. And then they'd come down to the farm and spend a little, a few hours, but uh, nothing, you know, like overnight or a week at a time or something. All right, and then so so we learned how your mother and father met. They were neighboring strawberry farmers. Yeah, well, um, they were met, you know, right next door to each other almost. So, what were their personalities like? What was your father's personality like, and what was your mother's? He was a tough guy too. Yeah, no, he was all good. You know, like, like I say, he was like his. Uh, like my grandfather, the my ma's grandfather, he, he was stern, 
You tow the mark and you get out of line and you let you let you know about it. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, we had no problems. All right. And then so what was your dad's name? Joseph. What was <laughs> so Joseph? We were all kind of Josephs. <laughs> Alright, and then what was your mom's name? Teresa. After my grandma. No, wait, wait, wait. That was her middle name. Her first name was Julia. Do you remember what her maiden name was? Vig. Vig? That was my grandfather's maiden name, or name, Vig. And then the Spizak of up here. And then this is where they met. And... Yeah, the, her maiden name was Vig, and Andrew Vig was my grandfather, my mother's side, and then Joseph was uh, Spizak on uh, dad's side, so that right. was it. Uh, all right. <laughs> so other than being strawberry farmers for a little bit, did your parents have any other professions or jobs? Well, my Dad worked in a grocery store downtown, down in Albany, you know, a few hours. But he was up on the farm, mainly. Yeah, of course, after the strawberry season was over, they had, his grandfather would have beans, uh, cucumbers, and everything else, about well, four, five, six different crops, and they'd save some of them for home and then sell the rest. All right, so let's see. So you, you talked to us a little bit about how your dad was stern. So what about your mom? What was your mom like? She was all right. Very easy going. All right. And then let's see. Do you have any special memories with your parents or anything that stands out about them? No, not really. He didn't. Was there... He didn't stand out, you know, in a crowd. You know, he, you know, he was just there. <laughs> Did you guys do anything as a family together other than doing some strawberry farming? Oh, well, you'd have your family get together, and then there were grandma's sister lived down the road, and we have a family gathering, you know, <laughs> quite a few times a year, you know, so yeah, that's about it, really. Do you have anything additional? How many more you got? Grandpa, there's a lot. There's a lot. Come on, cut it, a... cut it off. Cut it in half. <laughs> All right, let's see. Get to Detroit. Okay. All right, so when did you move to Michigan? Well, let's see. When I was 11 years old, I think. So you were 11 when you came to, to Detroit? Michigan, yeah. All right. Um, so when you moved here, who all moved with you? Or who all came up here? Me, my brother, my sister, and my mother. My dad was up here already working at Ford's. So when did he move up here to work at Ford's? Oh, if you, uh, about, like how, how old were you? About three or four years before us. So then, did he ever come down to visit you guys, or was he? No, he came money? up here. We, he sent for us to come up here. I don't know why he d decided to come up. Yeah. He just did. See, some of these questions uh, my brother or sister could have answered better, you know. So you said that one of your brothers moved up here with you. So did Joe stay in Louisiana? Or was it Andy? Who? 
Uh, so you said when you moved out to Detroit, it was you, your brother, your sister, and your mom. So what about your other brother? Was it or Andy? Both, yeah, or did both of your brothers come up? Yeah, they came up. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joe, Andy, my sister Mary, and me. Did you move houses, or did you stay in the same house the whole time when you were growing up? Oh, no, we, we came up, let's see, uh, trying to remember where we started. No, we, uh, on Harbaugh in Detroit, and we moved to Cottrell in Detroit, and we moved to Waterman in Detroit, it was right behind the high school, and I think that was it. Three, three places we moved to. Were you ever in school with any of your brothers or sisters? I can't remember the age gap. If you ever went to oh, school, yeah. With them. oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. My brother Joe, he was like a. When we were in high school, he was in eleventh grade, and I was in the ninth grade. And my younger, uh, Marnie, uh, Mary, she was just a year ahead of him, Joe. And they graduated. And then my younger brother came into the high school, and I was up in the senior area. And so we, we had two... One or two of us together at the same school most of the time. All right. Well, that works. Um, what did you do in high school? Or, like, what were your favorite? Did you, were you in any clubs or anything? It's, it's, my favorite was science. Yeah. And then what, like sports? Well, I played baseball. In grade school, softball actually is what it was. And then ran track. And that's it. They always wanted me to play basketball with them, but I didn't like basketball. I had, <laughs> you played football too, didn't you? That was in uh, high school. I didn't do any football in grade school. So, um, when you were moving around, sorry, I keep hopping back and oh, forth, good. I'm sorry. When you were moving around in Detroit, because you said that you went from, you know, kind of place to place a little bit, um, did you have any neighbors that you played with or anything, or any neighbors that stood out? Well, the one, the first house, it had three boys that we played together with all the time. Let's see, I'm trying to think of the second one. I can't remember anybody there, and then at the third one, there was one guy that we used to chum around and go to high school with. Other than that, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so growing up, this could be in Louisiana or here in Michigan, did you have any pets or any animals? Pets? Yeah. Well, I had the, the black lab here, Samantha, and then down on the farm, we had all kind. Two or three dogs, I can't remember all their names. And then I had a little, pet little pig that used to follow me around all the time. Well, that's about it. Especially on the farm, though, you got all kind of pets. <laughs> yeah? I can only I can only imagine, Grandpa. Oh yeah, yeah, chickens and ducks and lambs and sheep and everything following you around, looking for a handout. You know. So, so growing up, either here or in Louisiana, who did most of the cooking in the family? Well, down in Louisiana, my grandma she was a good cook. She did most of it. Did and up here, my dad did some cooking, but uh, my ma did most of it. Did you have a favorite food that one of them made? 
uh, Grandma used to make some uh, cottage cheese and noodles together with a little bit of chips of bacon in it. It was good. And then my ma and then uh, she would make what they called uh, dere. It was uh, dough, like a cookie almost. It was filled with lekvar or prune jelly, and it was good. And then she put uh, breadcrumbs on it. And it was good. It sounds like you've always liked lekvar, huh? Hey. And then uh, up here, uh, we had uh, what they call polachinta or crepes, suzettes. You, you put cottage cheese, jam, uh, lekvar in it, and you roll it up. It looks like a taco, <laughs> and then you eat it. <laughs> Was it like those real thin pancake things? Yeah. Yeah, they were about that big as the fry pan was, and they Hell, they were no more than paper thin. And then you fill it up halfway and roll it up. Yeah, because you made that here one time for me whenever I was a Oh, kid. yeah. Uh, Grandma hasn't made too much lately. She hasn't cooked too much lately. <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. Um, let's see. Some of these, I'm like, it's like, just, no, you just do it. That's just like a, a guideline, you know. Yeah. Just. So, um, did you have any chores that you had to do growing up? Any specific chores that you had to do around the house in Louisiana or here? Any and everything. Yeah, if something needed to be done and the parents couldn't do it, one of the kids did it all the time, you know. Feed the chickens on the farm. That way it take him away from plowing, maybe, and you can't plow, so you fed the chickens instead, and vice versa. Or you hauled water up for Grandma in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. Going to be big and strong. There's no running water, huh? Yeah, so there's no running water? Uh, just a pump out in the well. You pump it up. Not on a farm there wasn't. Yeah. Afterwards there was. So then did you have an outhouse? Huh? So was there an outhouse? Yeah. Yeah, oh. two or three of them. Two or three outhouses? Sure. It depends where you were. You didn't have to run all the way back to the one near the house. You had one out here in the field. You know, 40 acres is pretty big. You had a long way to run. <laughs> That would make sense. That, that would make sense. Uh, all right. So was there anything that your family did for fun or that you did for fun, like play any games or read any specific books? Well, we played a lot of horseshoes. <coughs> I can't think of anything else. We probably did any and everything, you know. So, so when you were younger, when movies were, you know, movies, <laughs> did you have any favorite films that you liked to watch or any favorite, like, actors or actresses? We didn't go down there too much to the movies, except when we got up here. Uh... I'm trying to think of that one that we, I used to watch. Hmm. Can't remember what it was. But uh, I watched all of them there. Back then, they had uh, Captain Marvel, Batman, and Flash, and all them kind of movies, or short subjects. I'm trying to think of the, the long, big, long film that we used to watch. I used to watch anyway. I can't think of the name of it right now. That's okay. That is all right. Did you listen to the radio at all? Oh, yeah. All the time. What, what was your favorite type of 
music? Just uh, the modern, no jazz or blues or anything, just the popular music that was on there. When you were, were growing up, did you ever go on any vacations or anything? Nah. You and Trail, you, you were homebody? We were, you had 80 acres of cover, and you go on vacation there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you got a lot of traveling done in your time, though, so. What's I, that? I said you got a lot of traveling done in your time. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After up here. After I got out of high school and uh, got a job with the railroad, he did some traveling there, Wabash, and then I went to school and got my electronics engineering degree and went to work for a university, and then there was always travel there, constantly. I'd go for two months and come back home for uh, two or three days and take off again. <laughs> or they'd send me there. So I covered the world that way. Do you want to get into that? A oh, little favorite countries and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. So what were some of the favorite places that you went or favorite countries that you went to? Oh, man. Well, I liked Thailand. That was nice. And then I was in Japan for a while. Uh, let's see, Sweden was nice. And then I went to Germany there, but then when I joined the Air Force, they shipped me to Germany anyway, but Germany was nice. And then South America, North Africa, you name it, I, I hit most of them, except a few of the smaller countries. You know, I just hit China, Japan, Alaska at that time was a territory, it wasn't a state, and geez, I don't know. So what exactly was your job or what made you have to travel to all these countries? For infrared remote sensing scanners. <laughs> they, they took uh, heat images of anything that gave off heat. You'd fly over them with a camera on this machine we called and they'd uh, take film and then we'd process it and you could see it. I mean, we counted uh, moose and uh, deer and elk out in Colorado a couple times, flying over them. And uh, if the guy that owned the place would put 50 in a closed off area and then we'd fly over it and see how many we could find. And we found 50 of them. <laughs> Unless they were up under a tree or something, then you couldn't see them. So, but other than that, it was good. So, go ahead. like military contracts or anything? Or was it all just, so, or was it government contracts or? Yeah, like so, so you said, you know, that you, you went over and you were able to see, you know, how many animals and like livestock and stuff in an enclosed area. But was there anything else that you would you would have to try to find like any from any? Oh yeah, we we flew over Vietnam to see if we could find the enemy, the Viet Cong, flying over the jungle. You couldn't see them because of the trees, but if they had a what they called a rice pot or a smudge pot, and it was cook, they were cooking their rice or some, we could pick that up. And we'd look at the film and say, yeah, there he is. And then they'd send a bunch of guys over and get them. <laughs> so your, your company had dealt with... Um, Daedalus? With the, it dealt with the government and with private citizens. That's the one we started, Daedalus. And then we went to U of M. Okay. Uh, no. 
So who 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 uh, who funded it? Was it like government funded or most of the, of the was it? Yeah. So who funded it? Like where where did your contracts come from or how did you? Oh, we 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 got contracts from Vietnam, like I say, and then we got contracts from Sweden. And a lot of these places that we flew in, China, and then they sent a bunch of guys over to our place and to train with the equipment and everything. But yeah, most of the places we went, we had contracts or they requested our presence, you know, for this, that, or the next thing. So was it kind of like privately or was it from the military from these countries or like where did the fun oh it was a uh, private some were private uh, some were from the military and just any and everybody who wanted to get something done a university at that country you know, we'd look at that and say this is what they want okay we only charge it oh, so much you know the military wanted this, we sock it to them. <laughs> so, yeah, they, uh... So, is there a particular job within that job that you had that was really memorable for you that you had to try and find that you're... No, I... The interesting one was trying to find a Viet Cong in the jungle, mainly. And that was pretty neat. You always had to wait if they're going to shoot you down. <laughs> so you had you were over there during when the war was going on, then. Yeah. Working. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. How long? Oh were you yeah. Yeah. We'd, we'd fly over. Two or three days later, we'd fly same area or a different area to find uh, all the smudge pots. And so how long were you over there for? Where, in Vietnam? Yeah. We didn't stay long. We had two or three groups that would rotate. Maybe there for two weeks, maybe three at the most, but in when we went to Thailand, we stayed there for three, four months, flying around and everything. everything. They were concerned about uh, what they called clongs. It was canals. They're afraid of uh, pollution, you know, and algae and what have you. So we. We'd fly it, and you'd see it if it was getting contaminated or something. And we would pick it. If infrared would pick it up, that was that was a good piece of equipment. And they still use it in the fighters. They call it heads-up displays in front of the pilot, and he can look out through it. And if he moved his head a little bit, the way it was angled, he could see his instrument panel down below without having to put his, take his off, eye off the outside and look inside. He could still keep looking outside and see everything that was going, how much gas he had and where, what direction he was going. It was interesting. I would do, go back to, I would say military and then family. Okay, cool. All right, so we're backtracking a little bit, Grandpa. Oh, no backtracking. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's after you graduated from high school. So it's, it's not far, far. So after you graduated from high school, when did you go into the Air Force? 1950. 51. 50 or 51. I graduated in 49. And I went to work for the railroad then, just after that, and then I got a draft notice to go into the Army, and instead of that, I enlisted in the Air Force. <laughs> So, so I didn't know that. So there's only an 
a draft for the army, but not for the other branches? Uh, I don't know if any other branches drafted you. I think you enlisted in the other ones, mainly. So, so. if you hadn't gotten that draft notice for the Army, would you have enlisted in the Air Force still? Do you think? Probably. Probably. It would depend on... How my job? See, I was working for a railroad then, and if I didn't like it, you know, and then I'd try to find another one and couldn't, I would have probably enlisted in the Air Force. I wouldn't go into the Navy or the Marines. And that was a new branch, because wasn't it the Army Air Corps? And then it yeah, was well, it was, uh, yeah, it was the Army Air Corps, and then they split off just about that time. And it was strictly Air Force then. So. so how long were you in the Air Force for? Four years, five years actually. They extended my four year enlistment a year. Did you like it? <laughs> Did you like it? Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a cop. I didn't do anything. <laughs> so where were you a cop at? In Germany and in uh, Texas. When I came back from overseas, they sent me to Texas. And that's it. They, after they sent me to, what is it, eight months? Eight or nine months of medical school. And then they shipped me to... Fort Orr, California, to ship out overseas to Korea, but I never got there. They had they had enough medics, so what they did was send me over to Germany, and then in Germany is they lined you up, and you. Sounded off by numbers. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Number one became clerk typist. Number two were co air, air police or cops. And number three was cooks or something. I forget what it was. So I happen to be number two. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if I would have been number one or three. <laughs> they big paws, they couldn't really type. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about when you were a cop in, the, the, in Germany. Did anything, what did you do specifically? What do you mean, what did I do? Well, because you, you did traffic, Well, I right? directed traffic. I was on the main gate. People coming in and out, I had to check their passes and make sure. And a couple crimes downtown with GIs, we'd go down and investigate that and see did the GIs cause it or did the Germans cause it or just what. Yeah, we did everything. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know what a GI is. Should I know what that is? Government issue. See, we they called us government issue. Okay. In Berlin right there at the Brandenburg Gate, there were Russians on the other side of it in East Germany. And uh, we were on the West German side. Yeah, there were Russian soldiers, and they put up a big wall <sighs> there, you know, barbed wire on top and everything else. Oh, yeah. We seen them, turkeys. <laughs> so when you were in the Air Force, did you have any, like, a group of guys that you hung out with or any good friends that you had? Well, yeah, you had your... You, your, your platoon, your group. When I made staff sergeant, I was in charge of, like if they worked, we worked midnights, then I had 12 or 13 guys on midnights with me. Or if we worked a day shift or whatever. 
Yeah, we had the same guy. Of course, the whole group would always was one because a lot of the GIs didn't like the other soldiers didn't like the airmen didn't like the air police. <laughs> you know. So did you have like? Because I know you gave me some photos of when you guys, I think, went to Paris. Because cause I have a photo of yours in my room where it's of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So we're oh, going yeah, to got... travel around with them? Someday, uh, if you can show slides on something. Yeah, I got a, on that new scanner I bought, you can put them right into it. I got uh, umpteen thousand there. You could... Look at Germany, and there's some from France and Sweden and Italy and whatever in there. And you see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah. Yeah, they're really leaning. <laughs> <laughs> I get into how he met Green. Yeah, I just, I just scrolled there. All right. So... Grandpa, how and when did you meet Grandma? What was that? How and when did you meet Baba? When? Ah. Uh, oh. oh, we got married in 57. It must have been during the early 50s someplace. Well, actually, I was... Grandma's older sister we went out a couple times and then and then she got she went off to college got married and uh i don't know how i then then she just came out there she was <laughs> So how long was your courtship with her? Or like how long did you guys date before becoming like serious or be before becoming oh, engaged, if you know? Probably a year. So so were you in the, the Air Force when you started talking to her? No, I was out then. All right, so it was after the Air Force that you guys oh, started yeah. talking. Let's see. Oh, this is awkward. That's why I just skip whatever you want to do, yeah. Yeah, I got uh, discharged in 56. Okay. And we got married in 57. Mm -hmm. Or 55, rather. We got I got discharged. And then uh, probably met her 50. Five fifty six, and then we got married in fifty seven. All right. Um, do you remember how big your wedding was, or if a lot of people came to it? My what? Your wedding? Yeah, it was quite a few. Grandma would probably know better. I, I don't pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> I know. We're, we're going to ask her these, too, so so we'll get a little bit more from her on... Yeah, on you'll on probably your, get all different answers. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, let me see. Did you have a honeymoon? Yeah, we went up north, actually, on our honeymoon to a cabin, uh, I forget... Uh, one of her friends had and loaned it to us and we went up there and then we went up to the Sioux, I think, and drove around up there. But that's about it. They didn't want to go down to Timbuktu someplace. Yeah, why well, spend all that money for nothing? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> right. I agree, Grandpa. <laughs> Um, so after you guys got married, where did you live? What? After you guys got married, where did you live? 
Ah, where in the heck was it? Huh. Was it in Del Rey with her parents? Ah, uh, I think so. It was upstairs. Well, wait, I am not sure. No, it was... Uh, I'm not sure if it was there with her parents or on Vanderbilt by her girlfriend's mother lived downstairs and we lived upstairs. Uh, yeah, because I'll get further clarification from Grandma. That's no biggie. Yeah, she she probably got all this recorded. I don't pay any attention to that stuff. Yeah, no, I got you. So, were you here or were you working during the Detroit riots? Were you no, I was here. Uh, I don't know if we were here. Oh, I, we, well, the, well, let's see. We might have been at her parents' house then during the riots. Because I remember her dad having a couple of shotguns on the porch there waiting to see if anybody comes up. <laughs> Other than that, I can't think of anything. All right, um, let's see. For 55 minutes. Okay, so we're doing okay, right? Okay, all right, so the next question is, tell us about your children. My good old dad and Uncle Chris. Oh, Chris? Yeah. The, that's the tiger. Christopher was the tiger, and your dad, he was the monkey. <laughs> yeah, he, I, in fact, I got the poster downstairs when he was going to school, and it's a monkey upside down, and he said, is it Friday yet? <laughs> so they get out of school for a few days, and, uh, Christopher, he was pretty quiet. He played uh, high school football, and then he went to Lawrence Tech and got his degree out there on, uh, oh, shit. Well, as a prof he's a professional engineer right now, but I forget what they called him then. House builder estimate or whatever. Yeah, well. Well, cause, yeah. yeah. And then your father, he dingaling, he went to he went to school and became a <laughs> became a crook keeper. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good no, way he, to put it. He liked it. Yeah. So can't complain. Yeah. So, um, so you said that Uncle Chris was quiet. Is that how he was when he was a kid growing up, or just always, or how would you describe Uncle Chris's personality when he was a kid? It's on the quiet, quiet side. He didn't, as far as I can remember, he didn't stand out. As a rouse about or making all kind of noise or anything. What about my dad? Eh, yeah, same with him. He'd uh, he'd have his moods and times, but other than that, yeah, it was all right. Um, let's see. Now, when you get to you, you're a rotten egg. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. No, you, you the punk. Yes. You is the punk. Thank you. I, I get it from you. I, I remember back 
I don't know how many years it is now, four or five years? Maybe longer than that. It's, I called you Jessica a few times. And then you came to me and asked me if I was mad at you. And I says, why? He says, you call me Jessica. You're not calling me the punk anymore. So that's why I've been calling you the punk since then. <laughs> That's okay. You were a young lady then, you know? And still, and I figured out, yeah, a punk ain't right. You get to call you Jessica. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't like that. Huh? <laughs> I said, I didn't like that. What? The punk? No, I didn't like the Jessica. Oh. I like the punk. Yeah, I know you're the punk. <laughs> you're still the punk. Is there anything that you learned in your life that you would like to tell me and Jeffrey? Or future, future people. Or future people, but we're here right now. I need some wisdom. Nah, let them find their own way. <laughs> no, right. I... Not really. You, you don't want to press anything on somebody else that they may not want, you know? And that's the way I feel. If I say, Jeffrey, you can't do this or that or the next thing, do something else, he might not like it, see? So, no, I, go your own way. What you feel is best for you might not be good for me, but it's okay for you, see? I like that. That's the way to go, man. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so so this, this next question kind of makes me laugh a little bit, because earlier when we were talking, you were like, I asked you how you were doing, and you were like, Jess, you were like, I'm 90 years old, right? So, so this question... How am I doing? Well, no, yeah, yeah, so how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Okay. So this question asks, what are you looking forward to in the years to come? Health. Long life. I want to catch up to Methuselah. What is that, 969 years? I think Methuselah lived. So why not? The hell? <laughs> so, then, go ahead, what were you going to say? That's all. Okay. And then the last question is, looking back, would you say you had a good life? Yes. Why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> it's written right here. That's the only reason I'm asking. Yes, I had a good life. Why? Because I enjoyed it. Hey, man. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> All right. I think that's everything, Grandpa. Good. Thank you. Now, when you you question Grandma and you run the two tapes side by side, you're going to find all kind of discrepancies. <laughs> Mine are going to be all wrong. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> except, okay. may, except maybe the Air Force ones and uh, yeah. a couple of the other ones. But other than that... No, but... <laughs> We are all done, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sometimes I feel like you're hiding things. I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> what am I hiding? You're like a super secret spy or something. Who? You. When? Now. <laughs> Where? <laughs> you're asking me the questions now? Yeah.